Hello, everyone. Semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. Happy Friday, everyone. I hope you had a great week. I see we've got a couple of people in here, so let me go ahead and end now. It shows zero again. Okay, but thanks for stopping by anyway. If you arrive, go ahead and say hello. Let me know you can hear me. Um... Okay. Addicted to Antlers is here and Mikey is here. Hello to both of you. I'm glad you're here. Um, <clears throat> I did a video a few, couple of days ago where I talked about vitamin C and I thought today perhaps we could go back, oh, we could go over some more of the myths that surround the carnivore diet or the common questions that our friends and family like to ask us about, as opposed to, you know, I don't really want to call them arguments, just the discussions that we can have when we have a, you know, when people find out that we're on a carnivore diet. And I, you know, we just talked about vitamin C a couple of days ago. I will say hello to Richard from Copper Hill, Tennessee. I'm glad you're here today, Richard. But the next thing on my list to talk about today, while we wait for some more people to come in and some questions to show up, let's talk about fiber. You know, we're always told fiber is essential. You got to have fiber in your diet. Fiber will do magic things. And one of the things that they talk about is uh, because, yes, we do have the ability to ferment a small amount of fiber in our gut, our lower intestine, which one of the main things we get out of that is... Um, a nutrient, I can't remember, it's like hydroxybutyrate or butyric acid, butyric acid, I believe is what it is. But it it's one of the nutrients that our lower gut requires. But it doesn't care which side it comes from. And what's one of the number one ketones? Butyric acid, hydroxybutyrate. Same thing. And your gut lining doesn't care which side it's getting it from as long as it has it. Um, and we will pick up the fiber discussion here in just a moment. I want to say hello to John Boston. Hi, Bob. I hope everyone is doing well. Got a nice chunk of roast for my OMAD today. Excellent. I actually had a roast yesterday because... I have a, a monthly get together with friends and they had a, a pork butt roast that I got for, it was like $1.49 a pound. And that's how I can afford to feed eight or nine people is by buying a big pork butt roast. But I needed a little something more to get to the delivery you have to order $35 to get it delivered for free with the plan I'm on. So I went ahead and ordered a roast, which I had yesterday, which put me over the $35 mark. And, oh, yeah, speaking of over the, the mark and sales and all that, I don't know which grocery stores you guys have there, but keep your eyes on the flyers. Like I saw one from, we have a local, uh, I believe it's a national chain, but one of the stores that I go to around here is called hy V, And they are offering, if you buy a, a Hormel Cure 81 ham, you get a turkey for free. And one of my other favorite grocery stores, Fairway, usually the sale flyer should come out soon, usually... Um, right around Thanksgiving, if you buy $100 worth of other meat, you get a free turkey. So keep your eyes open for free turkeys this week and next. Um, <clears throat> I know turkey is not the greatest meat in the world, but it is meat. And 
anywhere from a 10 to a 20 pound turkey, depending on where you're buying it and what you got to buy to get it for free. A whole turkey for free will go a long way towards making the carnivore diet even more affordable. And Mikey has sent in a super chat. 10KR for each day that went sideways this week. 5KR because YouTube sets defaults. I just had my first meal back on carnivore and I am hopeful. Be sure and check out tomorrow's video. I have my interview with Pim Jansen coming out tomorrow. And it's really good. She talks a lot about things that can trigger us to eat certain things. Her primary areas of specialty is uh, nutrition. She has a master's degree in nutrition science. And she is an addiction specialist. So be sure and check that out tomorrow. It's definitely worth watching. And we're 14 people. Excellent. Terry Hurst from Fort Worth, Texas. Hello, Terry. How are you today? I have two pork butts in the freezer. All these running bone in ribeye for $7.99. I saw that. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to even just a little bit better sale because $7.99 a pound is still just a little more because I'm in an extreme saving mode right now to try and get to Texas. I'm basically on ground beef and eggs plus anything I can find on extreme sale. So hopefully we get some of that six nine if we if we get some six ninety nine action going sometime in the next couple of weeks, I'll be getting some ribeyes and putting them in the freezer as well. My digestion is 100 times better on carnivore. After a week off the rails, I feel like com complete crap, achy, grumpy, old, and destroyed. No fiber needed. Remember how you feel today. Even take notes on everything that hurts today. And then the next time you think about going off the rails, pull that notebook out and have a quick look at everything about how you feel today. And as we talk about with PIM, don't think of it as failing. Think of it as the next step in your learning journey. You made it a week this time. That's a week worth of wins. Perhaps next time looking at things that have gone wrong will let you get to a week and a half. And then you have another little problem. And then after that, maybe you get two weeks. So each little failure, if you will, each time you fall off the wagon and stop doing what you're doing, you get a little more experience. You learn a little more about how to, how to stick with it. And every time you don't stick with it and something goes wrong with your health, you have more reinforcement for how, you know, you have more reinforcement to help keep you on track. And Monday's video is going to be um, about some of that as well. So be sure and stay tuned this weekend. Yes, John, it does sound really good. Wigman's is running a deal for Shady Brook turkeys over 24 pounds for... 29 cents, under 24 ounces, 49 cents. Yeah, and I just saw one that had uh, the turkeys were like 20 to 24 pounds. The sale hasn't gotten quite that good yet, but it's still at 79 cents a pound. That's a pretty doggone good deal. I'm waiting to see what fair, I'm, I'll get my fairway flyer for the week in my email tomorrow. I'm hoping that's, that they'll be running that sale because... You know, the Cure 81 ham to get a free turkey from hy V is good, but ham is not something I eat a lot of because it's cured and there's some carbs in ham. But if I can go to Fairway and get $100 worth of meat that I would normally buy, even if it's just $100 worth of ground beef, 
and getting a free turkey because I'm buying ahead of the stuff that I'd normally buy, that seems like a pretty good deal. Jeannie saying, hey, Bob, hope the OSU wins again this weekend. Yeah, we're playing Michigan State at home in prime time. It should be a fairly easy game, but in November, you just never know. You, you know, you just got to kind of throw the record books out and see what happens. Yes, I love Pim as well. Don just showed up. Hello, Don. How are you today? I'm glad you're here. Isn't fiber what makes us gassy? I don't think I pass gas even one-tenth as much. Yes, fiber, part of the fermentation process is that fiber will make you gassy. Yes, indeed, that's absolutely right. I'll get back to the fiber discussion if I get caught up on comments, but keep the comments coming in because I can always save the rest of the fiber topic for a later video. I'm a ribeye guy. Yeah. I love ribeyes. If I could afford to eat them every day, I certainly would. I thought I saw Craig had a question there. I, no, I didn't skip over it. It's just not, I'm not down there to it yet. Okay. Bob, has the Cerule company produced a sweetener-free product yet? I have seen, now, of course, the regular products, you know, like Plasma Flow, and stem enhance ultra those don't have sweeteners in them the thing that has sweetener in it is the uh the the collagen active and they there is a new drink i've been seeing that there's a new product coming and i suspect it's either a sweetener free collagen active or a much greatly reduced sweetener collagen active. I can't say that for sure because I don't know. The official announcements haven't been made yet, but I remember in speaking with somebody who's very high up in the company that he had, um, this has been several months ago, he had a discussion with the people and the powers that be at Cerule and they were talking and they, they were talking about an unsweetened collagen active because the powers that be were afraid that nobody would would drink it if it wasn't sweetened. And this particular person says, my followers are made of tougher stuff. It doesn't matter what it tastes like. If it's unsweetened but has all the properties of Psy Active, they will drink it. And I agree. So I suspect that's coming, Jeannie, but I can't say for sure one way or the other. When I buy bone in ribeye, I get a bunch of it and put all the bones with some meat in the slow cooker. Yes, indeed. And I think you asked that. I, yeah, I've already asked that. Craig, what do you got going on here? Did you use your excellent photographic skills to take that picture behind you? No, absolutely not. That's just a stock photo that I picked up on a free photo exchange. Um, I did not take that picture because if I had taken that picture, it would be cooked and in my belly now. But I don't, I don't have that. That's not mine. Let's see here. Been on first two weeks of carnivore. I'm finally getting my energy back. So I'm doing. Some, am I doing something wrong? Um, no, no. It. It can take a while, anywhere from a few days to several weeks for your body to fully adapt to being a fat burner as opposed to a sugar burner. Um, it, it can take a while. I got, well, I didn't have any energy to begin with, but I ended up getting um, my energy back and I started to notice energy increasing it was about at the one month mark, but I was severely damaged when I started this diet. And that's one of the things that I would touch on today as, you know, you see all these people, oh, well, I tried carnivore for two weeks or I tried carnivore for a month and it didn't work for me. Or you see some of these guys that are 
gym rats that are making workout videos and they try a 30 day carnivore experiment and their lifting capacity goes down. They're like, see, it doesn't work. Well, it takes time to become fat adapted. Um, but once you get past the first 30 to 45 days, you should notice some really good increases in your energy. I do have a free Facebook group, Don, if you want to stop by and, and jump in on that. There's a lot of good information to be had there as well. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't think you're doing anything wrong. First two weeks, just getting your energy back, that sounds like about the right time frame. John says, Bob, if you were to pick up all the roast, chuck eye, eye around, rump, etc., which do you prefer? Roasts are about the same price as ground beef, and I prefer roast. Well, they're not here. Um, the, the pork roasts are about the same price as what I can get ground beef for. But right now, all the different types of beef roasts are the cheap ones are running about six eighty. <clears throat> excuse me, 680 to 720 a pound for the cheap roasts. And I can get ground beef for about $3 a pound if it's not on sale, normally about $2 a pound if it's on sale. Um, but if I had to, to pick a favorite roast, I'd have to say a chuck roast is probably my favorite. Give me just a second here, guys. Chuck roast is probably my favorite, but they're significantly more expensive right now, which is why I've been throwing in some pork roasts and some chicken thighs with my ground beef because I can get a big tray of chicken thighs for about half the price of ground beef, um, and I can get pork slightly less than the cost of ground beef. So if I want a big chunk of meat as opposed to ground meat, I'm going with either chicken or pork right now because I'm trying to eat as cheaply as possible. The one positive thing, I had a huge craving for Asian food today. After looking at delivery services for an hour, I got up and made ground meat with eggs, and I made bacon. Absolutely. And... Asian food, uh, I'm assuming it has some sort of rice with it. You know, I mean, if you just, if you really want some Asian food for yourself, just get some beef and, you know, maybe put some kind of Asian sauce on it. It's not the greatest, but, you know, stir fry up maybe some, some snap peas and a little bit of broccoli into it and stir fry it all up, but then have it without the rice. Um... It's not completely carnivore, but it might, because, of course, broccoli and peas are not carnivore, but it might get you over your, your craving for Asian food. But ground meat, eggs, and bacon is much better than even Asian food you make yourself. Yes, huzzah indeed. And Jay is here. Hello. How are you today? And Jonathan from Carnivore Muscle is here. Hey, Jonathan, thanks for checking in. Let's see here. Thanks for the influence rule. I'll be in touch with you to place an order. Absolutely. You can contact me at my um, email, or you can just click the link in the description and order directly from Cerul. Um, Just make sure it has my semi-retired Bob name at the top of the page after you click on the link. And then, as I've always said, if you want to just buy products, that's fantastic. I make a lot more money on those, but I would recommend either becoming a preferred customer or an independent business owner in your own right, because it you end up getting the products cheaper going that route. And wellness packs are the way to go as well, because you get multiple products at a discount and then discount for being a, either a preferred customer or an IBO. So 
you end up getting it a lot cheaper. But again, if you want to just go pay full price on the website, that's great because I make a few extra dollars that way. I don't recommend doing that. The passing gas was really coming as a surprise to me last week. Of course, I knew about it from before carnivore, but I was not aware anymore that this was missing from my life. Not missed. Praise be by Hello, Nathan. I'm glad you're here. And Gail has arrived. Hello, Gail. I'm glad you're here as well. Let's see who else is here. Uh, I have the most energy and mental clarity on OMAD. I also supplement with iodine. Yes, and that's one of the things. I haven't done an iodine video in a while. That's one of the things that's on my list of things to talk about in the coming weeks. But we'll see where it makes it in the in the discussion. Bonnie is here. Hello, Bonnie. How are you today? Andre has arrived from Northwest Montana. Hello, Andre. I'm glad you're here. Day four of OMAD for Andre. Excellent. Let us know how that's going for, for you. Gail says, I'm putting a chuck roast in the slow cooker tomorrow. Yes, and the, the pork butt roast that I have for my friends on Sunday, I'm putting that in tomorrow afternoon, and I'm going to let it go in my slow cooker for a full, like, 14 hours overnight, and then, yeah, I know, it's not carnivore, but I'm going to throw some vegetables in the pot because they're not carnivore, so I'm going to throw some potatoes and some carrots and some onion into the pot with it and let that go for another... I'm hoping to get the vegetables added sometime between 6 and 7 in the morning, and then they'll get here at noon. So they'll have the vegetables will have a good five, six hours to, to finish off the roast. So hopefully the roast will be at about 18 hours, maybe even 20 hours by the time they get here. I'm hoping I, it just all falls apart off the bone into my slow cooker. That would be awesome. And let's see here. Oh, Andre. Yeah, hunting, talking about hunting in the great state of Montana. I like chuck roast as well. I cook it long for a long time at lower heat, so it's more tender. Yes, absolutely. Alan is here from Alan's Awesome Keto World. If you guys haven't checked him out, be sure and check him out. If you're doing keto, he's got a lot of good keto stuff. And he he just he's got some good stuff on his channel, so be sure and check him out. Uh, used to long ago, so I'm guessing you're not a hunter anymore. Let's see here. Grateful Keto is here, caught alive. Yippee! Hello, Grateful Keto. I am glad you're here as well. Oh boy, I'm still way behind on comments. You guys are doing good today, keeping me on my toes. I see four deer in my yard. Oh, it's time to just stick the shotgun out the window and get you one. Yeah, they have bone-in pork roast for $1.59. I know what I'm making this weekend. Yeah. I guess I'm not a huge fan of, you know, pork and chicken over top of beef, but it's so much cheaper right now. Again, turkey. I see a lot of turkey in my future because the turkey prices are so low. Not much on venison. I prefer beef and lamb. Yeah, I do too. And venison's usually a little bit on the lean side, so you have to add some fat to it. But if I get a freezer full of meat for the cost of shotgun shell, I'm that's that's very economical. Uh, if you put sardines on a green background, maybe Bob would use it as background. Craig, yeah, probably not. My local Super One grocery store puts a cut of beef on sale each Wednesday. This week, New York Strip for six ninety eight a pound. Excellent. Yeah, they have the bone in ribeyes on sale seven ninety nine this week, or that T bone. There's a lot of sales going on this week before Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, there he says T bone. Let's see here. Wow, 184 hours in a crock pot. 
18. It's not actually a crock pot. It's one of those old Hamilton Beach slow cookers. Um, you know, the white ones with the black insert that sets down inside, and then it's got a white lid that goes over top of it. That's what I use. I don't actually have a crock pot. Let's see here. Yep. I love bison as well. Yeah, bison is good. You can get bison around here, but it's oh, it's on the expensive side. Well, since I seem to be... Um, oh, Craig just came in with one here. Do you always cook your ground beef using the same method? No, no, I don't. Sometimes I press it into hamburger patties. Sometimes I just brown it up in a skillet for loose ground beef. Um, sometimes I mix the eggs straight into it. Sometimes I make the eggs on the side and eat them together. Um, I do a lot of different things with the ground beef. If you go back, I even have a carnivore bread recipe on this channel where I mix the ground beef with some pork rinds and some other things and make a little mini loaf of bread out of it before I eat it. There's a lot of ways to do ground beef. Okay, I'll take your word for that. Elk, pronghorn, and oryx taste good and also makes great smoked jerky. Okay. A friend of mine got moose a few years back. I prefer that more than deer. We have to go up to Maine to get moose. Yeah, I, I'm willing to try all that stuff. We don't have very many moose here in Nebraska. Let's see here. I've never eaten moose. Not too many in New Mexico. Yeah. Okay. While well, we're caught up for just a moment, I will. Let's get back to the fiber discussion that I started earlier. Um, one of the arguments that they'll make, of course, we all know that none of us have gone to the restroom since we started carnivore. So it's been 18 months and three days since I've gone to the restroom. No. You do not have to have fiber to have good bowel function. And one of the things that they will often say that your friends will ask you about, it's like, well, you have to have fiber or you're going to get constipated. Well, that's not exactly true. In fact, it's completely false. We don't, there's not a lot of good science on this. And even the, what I would consider a good study is a, is a short study with a few people, I believe the N equals number was 63 people. But there was a study done where they divided them up into some groups. And one group, they said, don't change anything, eat the same diet that you're doing. Oh, and the, these people were presenting all with what's called idiopathic constipation. Idiopathic is a fan fancy medical term for we don't know why you're having this. But of course, doctors can never say, I don't know. So they call it idiopathic. But all of the people presented with idiopathic constipation, and one group was told to change nothing. One group was told to add more fiber to their diet. And one group was told to eat no fiber. Now, obviously, the group that did not change their diet, they didn't really have any change happening because they didn't change anything. The group that was told to consume more fiber, I believe it was 50% more, that group ended up having worsening symptoms. And as... Dr. Mason puts it, think of it as a traffic jam on a highway. You don't clear a traffic jam by adding more cars to the highway, do you? The interesting part of this study was that the group, and again, these are all very small and they didn't control for all the other confounding factors, so you can't definitely say, yes, this is a cause and effect statement because it's not. It's This is all observational research, but isn't it Funny that in the observational group of those that were told to cut fiber completely out of their diet, that group's idiopathic constipation completely cleared up 
all of them. I don't remember. It was, I think it was 16 or 17 of the people were told to eat no fiber, but all of them had zero constipation symptoms at the end of this little trial. Isn't that interesting? Now, let's go back to the comments here. Where was I? I think I was here. I just had the first half and half ground meat and long wild pork and beef. I forgot how well that works for me since I'm not a beef fan. Yes. And if you watched last Sunday's um, Cooking with Bob video, I'm, I, uh, was that, the, oh, that was the chicken one. No, or was it the, no, no, I didn't make a video of it, but I posted it to the Facebook group. I did a ground beef, um, and I mixed a can of, one can of sardines into it. And how one can of sardines manages to contaminate a whole pound and a half of ground beef, I don't know, but the entire pound and a half of ground beef tasted like sardines. So if you like sardines, it doesn't take much sardine mixed in with your ground beef to make the whole thing taste like sardines. Or if you have... I've mixed it with tuna. If you happen to like tuna, the tuna flavor kind of soaks up into the grease of all of the ground beef. And uh, I'm told that smoked herring works really well for that. So I may order some smoked herring and try that as well. But yes, Rick is checking in. He has not gone to the bathroom in 40 years. And... Yep, like clockwork since going OMAD. Absolutely. Huh? Let's see here. Onyx is a hard stone. You can't make jerky out of it. Okay, that's kind of funny. Finally, after three months of constipation and diarrhea. Alrighty. Let's see here. Even people who try carnivore for only a few days will immediately see that they do not get constipation. The signs to the contrary are explosive and clear. And that does happen to quite a few people. Yes, indeed. Doctor should be like Ozzy. He sings, don't ask me, I don't know. I have said that to my doctor, that it's okay to be like Ozzy and say, I don't know. Well, yeah. Um, nope, doctors aren't allowed to say they don't know. They have to call it idiopathic. Um, you know, for years, my doctor called my high blood pressure idiopathic. Now I know that it was inflammation and prediabetes and all of the other things that were causing or lending to the high blood pressure. Okay. Ozzy rolls. It's easy to get fiber. Just eat paper. Yes. And did you know that, you know, if you look at some of the, the you know, if they put less, if it's less than 2% of something, they don't have to add it to a label here in the United States. And the number one thing that they add to food for added fiber, sawdust. Yes, indeed. They add sawdust to food to add fiber. Primal Mike is here. Hello, Mike. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a great week. And, of course, Rick loves sardines. I don't. I've tried them several different ways. I just I cannot acquire a taste for them. But uh, there we go. Yep, that sardine contamination sounds awful. Like I said, find a, you know, find a substitute. Alan says tuna is on, but no to sardines. Yeah, and tuna, like I said, I like, I like tuna. Let's see here. Different topic, non-carnivore. This month I'm doing a spiritual health November challenge and listening to at least one full mass each day of the month. Excellent. Good for you, Mike. 
I can put away six cans of sardines in one sitting. I think if I try to do more than one can at a time, I might that might make me gag. But if you like them, Rick, more power to you. Yes, yes. After 40 years of a carnivore diet, we are all praying that Rick gets to go to the bathroom soon. Maybe just go out in your backyard, cut down a tree, and eat the trunk. That will add some fiber to your diet and help out. Sardines also work well on my pacemaker pizza. Have you air fried your sardines? You might enjoy them crispy. Uh, no, I have not. Uh, I don't think I want to contaminate my air fryer like that, but I may try them. Sawdust to food? Wow, I had no idea. Yes. Sawdust. Fiber. Got to get that fiber in your diet. And remember, they can literally put anything in your food as long as it is less than a certain percentage. I believe it's as long as it's 1.99% or less, they can add it to your food without adding it to the label. That includes, you know, they can add arsenic to your food if they really want to. It's not a good idea, but they can as long as it's less than a certain percentage. No, and I'm not gonna, not gonna, not gonna. Hi, Bob, and everybody. I never eat fiber. My gut is very happy. Yes, indeed, Bert. We were just fiber was one of the things because I talked about vitamin C in a video. I decided to use today's live to go over um, some more of the discussions we might have with our friends when they ask us about our carnivore diet. We did vitamin C in a video earlier. I was going to go over some more, but we're almost 40 minutes into today's hour live, and we've barely got, gotten through the fiber part of it. So that's probably all we're going to get to today. I hope you're having a great week, or thanks for showing up. Petite sirloin or ground sirloin, three ninety nine at Star Market. Is that a good deal? Um, I don't know. Depends on what sir, what ground sirloin sells for in your area. Um, the place that I get, I mean, obviously, I get the big when nothing else is on sale. I get the big tubes of ten pounds for about $30, so it's about $3 a pound just from Walmart, but um, the store Fairway out here, they're, I have no idea what all goes into it, but they make their own ground beef out of the scraps they have left over from trimming steaks, and it's called Fairway's Own Ground Beef. It is from, like I said, the, the trimmings from everything else, and if it's not on sale, it's about $3 a pound. And when it's on sale, you can, I can get it for about $2 a pound. But depending on what ground beef sells for in your, air, in your area, $4 a pound for ground meat sounds like a pretty good deal. I eat cheap Parmesan cheese. It contains cellulose powder, also known as sawdust. Yeah, cellulose, but they, 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 some of the stuff, if there's more of it, like Craig said, cellulose powder. Mm, cellulose is basically sawdust. If you want to cover a topic in peace, you need to walk with it. With us, you get all sorts of other stuff. Yes, and that's okay. I don't mind doing that. I like my live streams. You guys seem to like the live streams because you guys keep showing up. And it's something that I don't really have to, you know, I have a basic outline of things that I want to talk about. And if I get to them, that's great. If I don't get to them, that's okay, too. Anyone tried Tillamook butter? I have not. Um, but anybody else that's tried it, feel free to chime in. I, uh, I know they make some cheeses that I've tried that are pretty good. I uh, 
I tend to just buy the cheapest stuff there is because Walmart brand butter doesn't have any extra stuff in it that's listed on the ingredient page. Now, I know it's less than 2%. They don't have to put it in, but that's the same for any butter you buy. And the Walmart El Cheapo butter, if you first glance at it, it looks like it's the same price as the expensive butters, but you get a whole pound of it for what you get a half pound for the more expensive ones. So that's just, that's what I use. It says 90% lean for ground sirloin. That isn't enough fat for me. Yeah. And, you know, if you go with the ground sirloin, it's 90% lean. Um, if you look at the price of that plus the price of a stick of butter and see where the break point is, you could buy the leaner ground sirloin, cook it up, and then melt some butter over top of it to up your fat content. Or if you keep beef fat trimmings in the freezer like I do, you could just take out a handful of beef fat trimmings and mix that in with it when you cook it. Just something to think about if it's a good price for the ground meat. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, same with you, right? Yeah. Craig, you live in Oklahoma. Your beef prices shouldn't be nearly as much as what John, John is paying in uh, in Boston. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's see here. 27 people talking with Bob today. Nice. Oh, up to 28. Again, if you're in here and haven't said hello, don't forget to say hello. Um, sawdust falls from my kitchen cabinets thanks to termites. Yeah, are you going to get your whole house tented at some point here to get rid of some termites? Or are you just going to let the, the place disintegrate and put new boards in as you need to to keep the house from falling down? Rick, let us know what your plans are with that in, a, in an upcoming video. For those of you that have not checked out Rick's channel, Charger Mopar, the 40-year carnivore, and you like ducks, that's a good place to go get some ducks in. And Uncle Big Guy is here. Hello, Uncle Big Guy. He's listening at work. I'm sorry you're at work, but I'm happy you're listening in. Hello, Uncle Big Guy. I'm, had your, I'm glad you're doing good. What is that? Tilla, what is it? Tillamook. 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 They have, um, they make some cheeses. They actually make some beef snacks as well. If you check on Amazon, you'll find, and just type in Tillamook, you'll find a whole bunch of their different products that are out there. Um, their beef snacks tend to be pretty clean. Their cheese snacks tend to be pretty clean. The rest of the stuff I have not tried, so I can't comment on that. My chuck roast is done. It's sitting on the stove. Cooked it for hours. No sardines were harmed cooking this chuck roast. Good for you. Ah, there you go. <laughs> if the house disintegrates, it will be worth more at sale time. Less demo required. Yeah, land in Florida is ridiculously expensive. Marnie Mac is here. Hello, Marnie Mac. How are you to do at work and listening in Toronto? I'm assuming it's cold up there in Toronto because it's cold here today. It's actually not too bad out now. It's up to like 45, 46 degrees outside. And it's supposed to be high 50s tomorrow. But then the rest of the week, um, at least from what I can see, Sunday through like Thursday is supposed to be high 60s and sunny all next week. So that's going to be a really nice week before Thanksgiving treat here in Omaha. 41 years soon. Bob, how tall are you and how much do you weigh? I'm 5'7", 161. So 
if you would, depending on which charts you're using, I'm still technically overweight because less than 160 is where the BMI scale says I should be. But I don't worry about it. I The only reason I know that is because I checked. I jumped on the scale for the first time in almost a month for my um, nine-month update video. On my last food delivery, they gave me a chunk of cheese instead of bacon. What do I do with the cheese? Um, put it down and use it as a mousetrap. Um, that's about all I can think of. Or you can eat it. Go ahead and eat it, but be very careful with it and don't eat it all at once. You know, that's, I can get by just fine with a little bit of, a little bit of cheese here and there. I don't buy cheese anymore because my problem is cheese is very, very yummy. And if I buy, say, a pound of cheese, planning on using, using it very sparingly, an ounce to an ounce and a half at a time with my meal, it ends up being, mm, I'll have just another slice. And then in the evening, it's like, I could use a little slice of cheese. So you go up and you cut off a little slice of cheese, then you cut off another slice or two of cheese. And pretty soon, I've had a whole second meal of just cheese. So I tend not to buy cheese. But if, if having a little bit of cheese doesn't trigger you to eat the whole brick at once, hmm, I see nothing wrong with cheese. It is carnivore. I don't eat any butter, just no need or desire. Maybe when I get leaner, that could change. Yeah, and I did not add a lot of butter to stuff in the uh, in the beginning. I just ate, ate the beef. As I've said many times, eat the beef, add the salt, drink the water. That will get you 90% to 95% of where you want to go, but... As you get closer to goal, you will probably find that you, if you end up finding leaner meats, like I use, you know, some pork and I use some chicken, um, I have to add butter to that to make sure I'm getting enough fat. As I was losing, I had plenty of body fat to burn. But now that I don't have as much body fat, I still have some body fat to use. But the the butter, I do have to add some more now. So as you get <clears throat> as things go on, you may find you have to add some more butter to things. But as I also say on this channel a lot, as long as what you're doing right now is working, there's no reason to change. Let's see here. Need some help lighting his outdoor grill when it's minus 20. That's about 42 degrees in Toronto. Yep, so it's about the same there. Good. I was looking at land in my city, 5,000 square foot lot. Is something for 499, yeah, a half million dollars for a 5,000 square foot lot. And I paid slightly less than $10,000. Now, granted, it's not in Boston. It's in the Texas desert. But I got 10 acres for a lot less than that. I don't have mice in Sweden. That is uncommon. Okay. And I don't know exactly what you're saying yes to, Jonathan, but I will agree with you. Cheese is addictive. Yes, for some people it is. It can be. Um, because it's a dairy product, it has, I believe it's called casomorphine, which is similar to morphine. It is addictive to a lot of people. Some people have problems. But it just, again, it's one of those N equals one experiments that you have to do for yourself. I know many carnivores that have no problem with cheese whatsoever, and they eat cheese every day, and they're they losing a ton of weight. Look at Dave Mack. 
he spent the entire first year of his carnivore journey having beef, eggs, and cheese. And he had cheese every day. And he lost a ton of weight, got all that healing in. And then it was about six months ago when he got that challenge from Carnivore Kip to cut cheese out for 30 days. And now Dave Mack has cut the cheese out because he didn't realize that he was actually having a small problem with the cheese. And <clears throat> everything accelerated big for him when he cut out the cheese. And of course, no live stream would be complete unless we all got to say, cut the cheese together. So one, two, three, cut the cheese. Yes, indeed. All right, all right. I'll give it to a friend as much as a cheese fan. I am a beef fan. Okay. And cheese can plug people up if you eat too much of it at once. Bob, if you buy, dar buy sardines and eat sardines instead of cheese, Craig says... That will cure desire for cheese. Ugh. Sardines cure your desire for life. Hi, Bob and everyone from Oklahoma. Hello, Creative Soil. How are you today? I, I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you popped in. Welcome to the last few minutes of the live stream. Let's see here. That's... I can't, still can't see the name. My eyes are, my glasses are dirty today or something. I don't know. But day 83 here in New Jersey, no question today. Just a big thank you for doing what you're doing. You are making a difference in other lives also. Well, thank you for saying that. I'm glad you're here. Um, also, I'll just say Nate. I'm not going to try and pronounce the A-N-W. I'll just say Nate. Hello to Nate. And thank you. I'm glad you're here as well. Yeah, I think I just don't need the fat now, thinking of eating leaner, higher protein, and putting on muscle. Um, don't plan. I, as long as what you're eating now is getting you the results you want, don't change anything because you don't need to go leaner and higher protein to put on muscle. Just eat what you're eating and start doing some resistance training because I've just been doing, you know, some sit-ups and some push-ups and some squats and working out with the cable machine to work on my shoulders and all of the walking I do and the dance that I do. Just do your daily activities. I'm pretty sure Jonathan will back me up on this. Until you get to the point where you're actually trying to look like Jonathan, if you just want to make your muscles stronger, you don't really need to adjust your protein and fat ratios. Just start adding a little extra exercise and do it properly with proper form, taking it easy, slowly building into it. I think I just put out a video this week on adding exercises slowly. Just slowly add stuff in. And I think you'll find that a regular old carnivore diet will help you build muscle. I know a lot of people that have not actually done any intentional exercise that have noticed their muscles getting stronger just because they're eating the protein of a carnivore diet. I hope I said that clearly, but if you need more advice on that kind of stuff, go over to Jonathan's channel, Carnivore Muscle. And he can help you out with that kind of stuff. Let's see here. How expensive is bacon in Sweden? That's interest. That's a good thing to find out. I cut out all dairy except butter. And a lot of people do. I am just using butter now as well. I would love to be able to add back in some cheese at some point. But I don't seem to be able to just add back in a little bit of cheese. I have problems with, as I just said, I tend to go overboard on cheese and and a half an ounce to an ounce of cheese becomes two ounces of cheese, becomes four ounces of cheese, and becomes, you know, a pound brick for my meal. 
It's expensive like everything. I'm not home to check the weight and do the math. And be careful cutting the cheese while starting carnivore. Absolutely. Absolutely. We all understand what John's saying there. Yeah. I am prone to binging on cheese, so I don't buy it. And yes, it plugs me up too. Yeah, I. some people can have just a part of it, and they do just fine with it. If you're one of these people that has trouble with that kind of stuff, be sure and tune in tomorrow because tomorrow is my conversation with Pim Jansen. And she is a nutritionist and addiction expert. And she has some really interesting thoughts on some subjects. So be sure and tune in for that. Um, so you're 15 ounces for about $5. That's not terrible. My timeline for moving to Texas is next fall early. I am staying in Omaha this winter to try and save up money because this summer I bought the land in May and spent all summer planning on going this year, but I kept finding more things that I had to have to build my homestead with. So I spent a lot of money on tools. I have all of the tools that I'm going to need with a few minor little exceptions here and there. Um, and a couple big exceptions, but I'm trying to save up between an extra seven and eight thousand dollars by late August, early September next year, so that I have the money to put the shipping container down, um, put a roof over it, and build the fence. So, even if I was just to go down and survey the land this year. In my truck, you know, it's, we're talking about $1,000 right off the top because it'd take about $500 worth of gas to get my truck down there and another $500 worth of gas to get back. And just suffering through the cold of Omaha this year, that's another $1,000 that I don't have to spend so I can just keep that tucked away and be a lot more ready to move down to Texas when next fall arrives. I have not cupped up on anything. I don't know if that is up or not. Let me take a quick glance at ESPN.com. Oh, yeah, Big Ten bans Harbaugh from sidelines mid-probe. Huh, interesting. I'll have to read up more on that later. Um, you'll have to read on up on that, but uh, Michigan's been embroiled in a... Uh, uh, sign stealing scandal. I'm not worried about the fat, but recently I learned there's literally no way to turn the fat into muscle, so I might switch to leaner. Um, I don't know about that. Um, I don't know. Um, if you're going to be eating, since you are eating adequate protein anyway for your needs, um, I don't know about that. I would suggest before you do any big changes like that, um, go over to Jonathan's channel at Carnivore Muscle and maybe even schedule a live one-on-one -on -one chat with him um, so that he can help you through that kind of stuff. Because I wouldn't – that's the type of thing I definitely would get some advice on. But I'm not going to make any comments on that because I don't know about that kind of stuff as well. Use lard instead of butter. Yeah, I like yard. Unfortunately, the, the last time I ordered, I had to order some more butter because they were out of lard. Unless I wanted to get a big five-gallon bucket of it. And I don't need a whole five-gallon bucket full of lard. I got chuck roast last week. The only thing I had was the chuck roast person behind me sees all the meat and says, is that all you're going to eat? And I said, that's right. Like Kramer would say, Kramer, is that a Seinfeld reference? I have to admit, I've never actually watched a whole... I, I have seen Seinfeld bits and pieces, but I've never actually sat down and watched a whole episode of it. But I sort of know who Kramer is. He's the big guy with the goofy hair that was in Seinfeld, right? 
Uh, let's see here. It's only bacon, not cured with sugar. Let's see here. Well, then I'm glad it's not that expensive. Still an investment. Maybe I should let myself get paid in bacon for when I'm dog sitting. Hey, now there's an idea for you. And yes, you do need both fat and protein. Uh, where was that? Oh, I, I, yep, you need both. Um, I always bought lard in a 40 pound brick. Yeah, I use it so infrequently, I don't know that I would ever get through all of that. Um, yeah, sardines cure your enthusiasm for life. Yes, exactly. And Bonnie says, tools probably cheaper here in Texas and no fuel to spend hauling the extra weight. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, I'm going to buy my shipping container locally. But uh, most of the tools I need because I'm not going into El Paso to buy things. I'm hoping to get a deal with the local hardware store in the small town I'm near. Um, because if it's not that much more expensive, by the time I spent gas going all the way into El Paso and back, that would be, you know, another 100 miles each way. So I'm going to take all my tools with me. Because I have a pickup truck and a trailer, I can haul it all down there. And the I could put an extra five or 600 pounds in my trailer and my truck wouldn't even notice because it's got a really big engine. It's just the weight of the weight of my truck going down the road. I mean, I've, I've hauled a full 55 gallon drum of water and didn't even notice that it was in the back of my truck. And the gas mileage is pretty much the same, whether I'm going uphill, downhill, towing my trailer, not towing my trailer. It's a big old truck. Totally get the Kramer reference. Let's see here. Yes, Bob, it was Kramer. I have relatives who took the bus into New York City. And they would watch bootleg movies on the bus. I thought it was a Seinfeld thing, but it's a real thing in New York City. Uh, yes, we need fat. I'm not talking about going to Austin. Okay. Yep. Hello, Sandra. Did I miss Sandra coming in? Oh, there she is. Yep, I missed that. Hello, Sandra. I'm glad you're here today. Just in time for me to say goodbye to everybody. Yeah, well, and I understand Rick uses 10 pounds of lard in a week in his hair. He has to buy in bulk. Absolutely. Um, yeah, well, I, I have, there are people that have, Said that, but I where I'm at, I don't actually have to worry about it because I'm about 100 miles due east of El Paso, which puts me about six and a half miles in the desert north of I-10. All of the activity is down by the border. They come north, and at I-10, they go either east or west because there's nothing north of my chunk of desert except another 50 or 60 miles of desert. Nobody's going to come hiking or walking or patrolling through my section of the desert. It just, it's not a thing where I'm at. And yes, she lives about 45 minutes from El Paso, but she's on up there in New Mexico. I understand. Let's see here. I have one refrigerator just for lard and tallow. And let's see here. The lard must stop the graying and the balding. Yes, because Rick has a lot of hair. Okay, well, I hope you all enjoyed today's live. I've gone over my hour by a little bit. Everybody have a great week. Don't forget, get out there. Be 1% better today, tomorrow, every day. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you in the next one.